What is up team, Killchain here. We're on the PTR. We're gonna have a look at the new tier set for Warrior. It's now officially in game to be able to test. And we're looking at Strictly Fury. It's insane. The tier set is everything we ever dreamed of. And honestly, I'm really, really excited. A little bit scared that they're gonna nerf it, but hopefully. We'll also have a look at arms, but I wanna do that in a separate video. So today we'll just Strictly be Fury. And uh, yeah, the tier set's obviously in. It actually looks really cool as well. Now granted, I'm a dwarf, so I'm biased. Normally I don't run helms, whereas the helm just gives a bit of height to the dwarf this time. And honestly, yeah, it looks absolutely badass. I can't wait to get it in game. And um, I'm not sure about yeah humans or anything like that. Also, as a bit of a side note, I wasn't actually gonna touch on this, but um, reason why we run dwarfs, uh, if you haven't checked out Blood Mount and places like that, basically the ratio is 2% increased crit damage. It's already one of our strongest alliance based um racials as it is right now uh however coming into season two from season one that's going to further be exacerbated by the fact that we're moving much more towards the crit mastery sort of style rather than a haste mastery sort of style with the current iteration with executes and everything being much more bloodthirst focused means that we don't care as much about haste especially with a particular talent called deft experience that's sort of doing the heavy lifting when it comes to shortening our gcd on the important abilities we actually care about and uh yeah you're going to see a much more crit haste while crit doesn't have value for the bloodthirst side of things because again we're pretty much we'll have 100 percent uptime on bloodthirst critting what is more important is the more rampage crits we get the more bloodthirst ridiculous op damage that we're doing so in that regard yeah now actually having a look at the two and four piece set as it is rampage damage critical strike chance both increased by 10 percent very very important obviously more i mean extra rampage damage is always nice right but more leaning towards the critical strike chance by 10 percent as that feeds directly into the four piece which means that rampage critical strikes against your primary target some people immediately went this is op in aoe because i'm rampaging five targets and each one of them will guarantee me to stack up to you know one if i only get one stack from every person uh it doesn't matter i'm guaranteed to hit four stacks immediately no it only procs off your primary target so do keep that in mind but it's retardedly op in uh aoe for reasons we'll touch on shortly but um yeah it's it's ridiculous it's so good uh but primary target and it obviously causes your next bloodthirst to deal 50 percent increased damage generate two extra rage which is also really important to that feedback loop of constantly going rampage bloodthirst rampage bloodthirst rampage bloodthirst yep very strong and um also stacks up to four times so the 100 percent in or 100 percent guaranteed chance to crit is also massive i hope we don't lose that uh really really puts it in a good light for that reason to help incentivize things like cod still hot blood and the extra damage on it is just insane. It obviously goes all the way up to 200%, and that does way more damage than Execute even does right now. You will have Bloodthirst, if not the second highest, definitely the highest. Um, it's top two damage profile. Uh, it's retarded. It also makes your Gushing Runes, uh, the Leech Dot that we run for Cold Steel Hot Blood, as a very, very dominant portion of your damage profile as well, especially in AoE massive in aoe it's insane now uh that being said the key components of what we're doing and how it shapes our build is a few things to keep note here now first of all we're definitely going to move out of hone reflexes a lot here probably where you'll see much more bitter immunity play specifically because um i just don't know where to put my hone reflex point by the way uh barbaric training seems more if it's a mythic plus by all means you're definitely going to pick up stormbolt but outside of that it's just like ha 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 uh, you'll see much more bitter immunity play purely because in mythic plus scenarios there's three dungeons i believe that'll have poison or disease in some variation so if your healer can't help you deal with that then you have the option of stone form being a dwarf that's one of my another reason why i moved to dwarf and uh, bitter immunity will help both get rid of diseases and poisons most notably you've got brackenhide hollow to deal with under rot and i think halls of infusion also has some poisons involved um so yeah very useful for mythic pluses as you start getting to higher key levels there it's just less people that the healer has to deal with trying to disease and cleanse off and everything um now as for the actual fury side now you'll see the shift away from raging blow entirely which means slaughtering strikes becomes irrelevant and uh you'll most notably notice that tenderize has been removed now this could totally not be the build that we run this is sort of just me kind of being relatively decent aura i think personally and uh yeah 
sort of judging from my testing of where we're kind of leaning as well as the warrior discord of course will help nudge you in certain directions and go hey yeah that's actually a good point so definitely well worth uh being a part of the warrior discord if you're not already but uh most notably yeah we're removing from tenderize the reason being is because the fact that it enrages you no longer matters we're able and capable of running fresh meat and you don't lose value out of fresh meat anywhere near as you currently did because not only does bloodthirst immediately enrage you but it also obviously increases the chance to then enrage you throughout the fight which means that the portion of enrage lasting longer has less relevancy from tenderize as well because again the entire build is centered around rampage bloodthirst rampage bloodthirst rampage bloodthirst you get the idea so the enrage doesn't matter that it lasts longer for tenderize cool that's gone and the fact that it immediately enrages you also doesn't matter anymore because we have uh fresh meat for that reason as well which means even in scenarios like uh mythic plus where we're chaining to new mobs and everything like that you're literally guaranteed an immediate enrage because you're bloodthirst as an opener all the time cool and lastly tenderize allowing three stacks of slaughtering strikes literally irrelevant because we don't ram uh we don't rage and blow anymore and Raging Blow along with Annihilator are the only two ways of stacking up your Rampage damage, so Slaughtering Strikes is irrelevant. Cool, that leaves Tenderize not needed in terms of any sort of a build with this current tier set. Now, where do you put the point? So obviously one point for Deft Experience is kind of the crucial tipping point, at least from my experience. Um, 0.75 seconds off your bloodthirst really helps solidify that sweet spot of being able to know that your GCDs marry up quite nicely. It's still a little off. I would still prefer to have two points. It's just you lose too much by losing Onslaught entirely. You could do it, don't get me wrong, but um, you could just drop out of Onslaught entirely and then go two points in depth experience. The reason why that isn't as worth it is because your tier set has to stack up to four times and not every rampage is going to immediately give you fours obviously you're sitting at around 50 percent maybe 60 percent crit chance on rampages so for that reason yeah you're going to have rampages where you just don't get lucky right and you've only got one stack of your four piece rather than the full four or two or three whatever the case may be and in those scenarios you don't just want to blow the low amount of stacks on a kind of lackluster bloodthirst it would be way better to spend that second gcd instead of going back to bloodthirst use your onslaught use your sudden death proc whatever it is to then get enough rage to do a second rampage to allow more stacks to then bloodthirst afterwards right so you're constantly in an ideal world getting enough of your four piece to go rampage bloodthirst rampage bloodthirst rampage bloodthirst but in the event that the rampage didn't give you enough stacks you can then use a gcd on execute or onslaught to give you enough rage to do a second rampage before you go back to bloodthirst that's the general idea and especially given our current haste and crit levels that sort of seems to be the best way to go forward uh as that extends over time when we're all 441 or above with ridiculous mythic plus gear the stat weightings at that point could potentially shift and that's probably going to happen at some point where you go cool we're critting enough that it actually sort of hits a break point where yeah it's fine we actually don't even need to worry about bloodthirst uh sorry onslaught at all as a filler to get the rampages rampages is consistently critting enough that uh over the course of you know a three to five minute fight it's actually better to just do nothing else other than rampage blood test rampage blood test and that's going to be really cool uh in an aoe scenario let's obviously go over and have a look the big ticket is the fact that again we can spread out cold still hot blood to everything it is insane obviously we only have three to test here in fact you know what no we're gonna do it we're gonna go to uh we're gonna go to val draken where you get the cluster of like five or six ads just because i reckon it will be really cool to see <laughs> but uh yeah in that aoe scenario right we obviously have the capability of still getting our stacks only from the primary target like i mentioned but um once you've got them all looking girthy and meaty then you're spreading your bloodthirst to your primary target plus four additional targets so five targets total and given the fact that if you even just have one stack it doesn't matter it even just one stack you 100 percent have a chance to crit with um bloodthirst so regardless of how many stacks you currently have although you do want more because the harder your um bloodthirst hits the harder your uh bloodthirst cold still hot blood will bleach actually no it's a set amount of leech i need to edit that out uh never mind no so um yeah the harder blood this is obviously it just does more damage right you want to see massive 200 crits on five people that would be amazing but um yes the fact that the 100 crit chance just needs only one stack 
Perfect, happy days. You've immediately got the capability of spreading cold steel hot blood without really needing to do anything other than just rampage, blood this, rampage, blood this, and it will do very, very solid damage. So obviously we can open up as normal as you'd expect to. Um, then basically every single uh, what's he you're doing, you can cold steel hot blood on everyone. And without even really popping anything major, you can see I'm able to do quite a large amount of damage. In an AoE scenario as well, you're going to find that you probably even less need your Onslaught to help you. But, um, I mean, it is what it is. You're probably not going to realistically be able to go, okay, in an AoE scenario, I need to have XYZ. Whereas in a not AoE scenario, I don't need to have it. Uh, single target, you definitely want Onslaught to help bridge the gaps. If you have any sort of AoE fight or in Mythic Plus, I could actually see Mythic Plus not needing it. And you just completely go into the deft experience wholeheartedly. Uh, fortified weeks, for example. Yeah, Onslaught out, deft experience in. Tyrannical weeks, maybe still running Onslaught. I think might still be the play there. Uh, overall, very happy, honestly. Let me know what you guys think. I'm super keen to uh, see what other warriors out there are kind of curious and oh dude i'm just so excited i actually can't words right now thank you very much for watching i know this is a bit of a rushed out video but uh nonetheless plenty to come i uh, will also check out the arms video as well coming up so yeah let me know in the comments below what you are looking forward to which particular warrior or is there any other class that uh, tier sets are really good really bad uh i'll be basically doing a lot of melee specs in general I'm quite keen on the frost changes that came in in 1007 for DK. However, the frost DK tier set of season two isn't looking too crash shot. So we'll see what happens. It'll be really good to go over it all. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.